Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to test the law of large numbers in R. So first of all, let's remind ourselves what the law of large numbers is all about. Our empirical rule, which is a measure of central tendency, uh, tells us that 68.3% of all values will fall between minus 1 and plus 1 standard deviations of the mean. So let's take a look at a diagram to see what we're talking about here. So here I have a data that is uh, normally distributed, and we, we can tell from these uh, curve, normal distribution curve here, with a mean value of 0 in the centre here, that 68.3% of all values in the distribution lie between minus 1 and plus 1 standard deviations of the mean. So we can uh, now use this to see um, uh, test the law of large numbers. In other words, that the larger the number we get, the more accurate this figure is going to be. So we're going to test this and see if we can come up with numbers close to 68.3%. So uh, the first thing we need to do is we're going to um, decide on the number of random numbers we want to use, initialize a counter, and then we're going to use a for statement with an embedded if statement to determine our results. So let's start step by step as to how we do this. So I'm going to need a counter first. So I'm going to call this a counter and I'm going to initialize that to a value of zero. <clears throat> then I need to decide on the number of random numbers I want to generate. So I'm going to use a function called rnorm to generate random numbers. So I'm going to call my variable here randnum and assign it an initial value of say 10. So that we're going to start out with a small value. And this number, we're going to change this as we go along through our code. So I've got a counter and a random number generated here already. Let me run those two pieces of code. And run the line 9 for randnum. And I can see in my global environment that my values for counter is 0 and for randnum is 10. So I'm now going to need a for statement. Because what I want to do is I'm going to use a function called rnorm to generate random numbers. All right? And the number of random numbers is going to be dependent on the value of my variable randnum. So I'm going to start out with my for statement. So that's a for, open and close brackets. Let me move down a few spaces here. And in the open and close brackets here, I'm going to use the uh, counter i uh, with the parameter in. And the, the thing that I'm going to generate here is the or norm function, or norm, and the number I want to do is going to be determined by my variable randnum. So in my first instance here, when I'm going to run this for statement, randnum will have a value of 10. As you can see, it's assigned on line 9. Now, I could, of course, put the value 10 in here. That would work uh, cleanly. Uh, but my preference is, is to not to use uh, values uh, within for or if statements because it can make the logic of these statements difficult to write. So next then I need my curly brackets so that I can um, put in my statement. What's going to happen each time or norm is going to work? So my first statement here on 9 and 11 is um, i is going to iterate, that's so why I've chosen the letter i, um, in this case 10 times. So the or norm function is going to generate 10 random numbers. A quick word on the or norm function, we have it in the, if you go to the help section in our studio and type in or norm, you will get the normal distribution um, information displayed. And down at the bottom here, in the uh, there's four different functions I can use or norm uh, n is the number so in my case n is 10 uh, the mean defaults to 0 and the standard deviation defaults to 1 so that's what I want in my code so I don't need to put that information in so in my for statement and now uh, what I want to do is check if the ran any of the random numbers generated lie between values of minus 1 and plus 1 because that's what the empirical rule I've made a note of it up here is that the empirical rule is that 68.3% of values fall between minus 1 and plus 1. So when I execute this I haven't run the code yet but I will have generated because randnum has a value of 10 I will after this statement here um, have generated 10 random numbers. And I want to know uh, what percent of those random numbers lie between minus 1 and plus 1. So I use an if statement to, to check that. So if, and the um, value to check here is i. So if it's greater than minus 1, and then I'm going to use the ampersand symbol here, and i is less than plus 1, just need to put in the 1 there, then I want to count that value. So putting in another curly bracket in here. So I want to count that value, and I can do that by incrementing my counter by adding adding 1 to it. Counter plus 1. Okay, and that's how I do that. So, so to recap here, 
uh, my value for the random number is just 10, so that's a small number. Uh, on line 11, I'm going to then uh, do iterate um, 10 times because um, randnum will have a 10. I'm going to run the or norm function 10 times, so that's going to generate 10 random numbers. And in my if statement here, what I'm doing is I'm checking, well, if the random number generated has a value greater than minus one and less than plus one, then I can count that as a value that fits in between uh, the, these two values here, which I know 68.3% of values should fall into. So let me go ahead now and run this for a statement. And so now to see the results, so what I'm going to need to do is check the results. I'm going to need an answer here that I'm going to be able to display. So I'm going to just create a variable called answer and assign it a formula here. So my counter value, so after the loop is executed, counter will have a value and I want to divide that by random. So the number of random numbers and then multiply that by 100 to convert it to a percentage. So let's me, let me run that piece of code here. We can see in this case here that uh, answer has a value of 60. So uh, for my purpose of my code here, I'm just going to display that answer here. Print answer. Uh, run that piece of code. We can see I get a value of 60. So in my case here, I've generated 10 random numbers and 60% of those fall between minus one and plus one. So that's not too bad. It's, it's close enough to 68.3. Let me run it again. And so I'm going to run the counter to zero, so leave random number at 10, run the for loop, recalculate the answer and display the result. And this time it goes up to 70. So because the random number generator is doing a different amount of numbers each time, we're getting values um, uh, 60 in first instance and 70 when we ran it the second time. Let me change the random number value now to 100. Okay, so my number is now getting bigger. So I reinitialize my counter. Randnum now becomes 100. Uh, run my loops. Uh, perform the calculation to convert it to a percentage and display the answer. And we're getting 66. Uh, and now 66 is closer to 68.3. Let me run it again. See what we get this time. No change to the random number. Perform the loop. Perform the calculation print my result, and I'm getting 71. So these numbers are close enough to 68.3. Let's see if we can get closer and change random number to 1,000. So reinitialize all my variables, change random number to 1,000, run my for and embedded if statement, perform the calculation and display my result. And we're seeing we're getting 69.6. So we're getting closer to 68.3 all the time. Let me change it to 10,000. So my numbers are getting bigger. So I'm now testing the law of large numbers. Reinitialize both variables, run my for and if statements, perform my ca calculation to convert to a percentage and display the result. And we're seeing we're getting 67.84, very close to 68.3. So the larger the numbers, the closer I'm getting to the 68.3 value uh, in my normal distribution here. So I'm, I'm starting to prove the law of large numbers. Let's increase this up to a million. So that's at 10,000. Uh, let me go, uh, there is a million, a million. So let's reinitialize the counter, generate a million random numbers, see how many of those fall between minus one and plus one, perform the calculation to convert it to a percentage, and print the answer. And you can see that the answer here is 68.288, or 68.3 rounded, so it's almost exactly the value of 68.3, which in itself is a rounded number on the diagram here. So what I would encourage you to do is um, to experiment with the values for random. Um, then uh, check to see, you could check to see the empirical rule if uh, how many values lie between two standard deviations of the mean and so on. Don't forget, each time you run this, you need to reinitialize your variables, otherwise your calculations will become very, very messy. So that's how you test the law of large numbers in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.